Yeah. Twitter says, if Matt Pearson's up for it, he can take my place on the teaching panel. <laughs> what? <laughs> From Christine. <laughs> she just suggested it. So all is arranged. How many people have Twitter? Oh. Welcome back, everyone. Hope you had a nice lunch and uh, that you're ready for the last half day of uh, the conference already. Um, before we start, I uh, heard that people from IRC wanted to have a little bit more uh, information about the uh, work on uh, events surrounding the Go Running documentary and also information on when to be uh, ready for release. So, in Britain, you have uh, some time to explain. Okay, so um, I do not know the schedule for Worldcon yet. But um, if everything goes according to plan, David Peterson will be there. So he will, he will know as soon as anybody does about when we've been scheduled. Uh, it will be a part of the Worldcon Film Festival. So they're doing a festival. We've, we were officially selected. And, but I don't think they've published their internal film schedule yet. Do you know when it will be? World Worldcon is happening in August. I don't recall the exact date, Where? but it's easy in the same piece of it. Sorry. Ninth to the thirteenth. And for general release of the film, that is likely to be via an online mechanism or multiple online mechanisms in mid August of this year. So another month or so to wait. But we are we are getting it done as quickly as we can. And we thank you for your patience. Is that everything? I think so. Okay. Thank you very much. Oh, and during the next break, if you wanted to talk to me about Ergative's class, I want your name on a list. <laughs> thank you. No, so we don't so we'll best carry on uh, with our presentation. Now, a presentation that I am really looking forward to. As you might know, I am kind of a minimalist when it comes to, uh, to languages, and I love to get rid of parts. And uh, I, I like to, to see that I'm not the only one. So I'll leave Matt to talk to you about how doing a position in Yes, <laughs> thank you. Um, so uh, uh, thank you, everybody. Um, I'm going to start with just a little bit of background here. Probably almost all or all of you know what ad positions are. So I will just do the 30 second version. So ad positions uh, are a category of words. They're typically free morphemes uh, found in most of the world's languages. Uh, although not all, um, and they're used to express a relation between two or more uh, entities slash events. Uh, an ad position selects a complement, uh, and the complement is typically a noun phrase or a clause of some sort. So uh, in constructions like after the party, after is the ad position and the party is its noun phrase complement. Uh, after happens to also take a clause complement as in after the children left for the party. We call ad positions prepositions, uh, if they precede their complement, so after is a preposition, uh, and we call them postpositions if they follow their complement. We don't have a ton of postpositions in English. In fact, we maybe have just one, uh, namely ago, as in several weeks ago. Uh, but as many of you know, uh, 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 other languages have uh, 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 primarily or exclusively postpositions rather than prepositions. Uh, the kinds of relations that they express uh, uh, are prototypically spatial relations. Uh, 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 so as in, in the house or under the table, uh, this could extend to temporal relations as in on Wednesday or after we get back, uh, and then various other kinds of roles uh, that a participant can play in a clause. So an instrument uh, with a hammer, uh, a commentative relationship, so an accompaniment relationship as in uh, with my brother, uh, uh, the goal, uh, uh, an emotion event to Dennis, uh, beneficiary for the children. We'll return to some of these notions later. Uh, uh, agents slash causes, reasons, as in by the woman, since it's raining. So in each of these cases, the thing that I've bold-faced in red is the ad position. Uh, and many, many other kinds of relations. A little bit about Okuna. So Okuna, uh, uh, taxonomically, Okuna is an a priori personal art lang. Uh, it was formerly known as Tokana. I consider Tokana and Okuna to be the same language. 
They're just, I just changed the name uh, at a roughly arbitrary point uh, mm -hmm. in the development of the language. Um, uh, Okuna slash Tokana began, I began work on it around 1993, actually around the summer of 1993. So it, uh, uh, let's say that today uh, is Okuna's 25th birthday, uh, which is why there are celebrations all over the world. <laughs> so uh, uh, it's a relatively well-developed, uh, well-described grammar, uh, just a, a few key points about it. Uh, so currently, uh, it is an uh, object verb OV language, pretty vigorously head final, mostly dependent marking, uh, and it has an ergative slash active uh, case alignment, which you will see uh, on display later. And my talk at LCC1 was primarily about the ergative active uh, case alignment uh, uh, in the language, so I won't focus on that here. I wanted to talk a little bit about the design principles that I adopted for this language. So sort of what, what kind of intentionality did I have uh, going into this project, or what kind of design principles uh, have evolved or developed as I've worked on the language. Uh, so one of them is naturalism. So Okuna aspires to be a naturalistic conlang, so I want it to be as typologically plausible as possible. Um, coherence, so the grammar should exhibit an, an internal logic or a, or a sort of personality of its own. Uh, uh, rather than uh, uh, really being sort of a, a hodgepodge bag of features that I happen to like. So I have to be very uh, uh, careful when I discover some new cool natlang feature uh, that I you know, uh, uh, consider adding to Okuna, but I think later, no, that would not be in the spirit of the language, so I'll leave that out. Um, an a priori structure, so I don't want the grammar uh, or the vocabulary uh, to be based uh, too closely on any existing natlangs. Uh, and completeness. The grammar should be as fully fleshed out as possible. I am very anal retentive about that, which is why the grammar is 400 pages long. Uh, and uh, so, and the description should also be as complete as possible. Uh, and then the one I want to talk about here, and so this is picking up on a theme from William Annis' talk yesterday, is economy. Um, so do make do with less. So what does this mean? Well, it means a number of things. One thing it means uh, is to uh, reuse or recycle uh, grammatical features for multifunctions rather than inventing a new solution for each uh, expressive problem. So this is sort of uh, the antithesis of what I call when in doubt, add a suffix, right? <laughs> uh, I, uh, I, I wanna sort of see what I can do with, with the little uh, material that I already have in the language. Uh, and then to limit the number of lexical category distinctions. This is something that's familiar from uh, languages like Sylvia Sotomayor's Kellen that we saw about in the Conline uh, documentary that does without verbs. Uh, 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 a, a very common kind of uh, uh, lexical category uh, uh, economy that I've discovered in Conlangs uh, is that people like to uh, uh, erase the verb adjective distinction, and I do that in Okuna. Um, but here I want to talk about there being no adpositions in the language. This is something that I gradually discovered about Okuna is that it doesn't have adpositions. Initially, I thought it did, and I kind of shoehorned them in, uh, and eventually the language told me that it didn't want them. And so they've, they've been, uh, they gradually disappeared. But how do you get along without adpositions? So uh, I wanna talk about some of the ways in which I do that. One that I'm sure occurs to all of you, or many of you, is case marking. Uh, so many languages do with case marking what uh, languages like English do with prepositions. But rather than having uh, a really elaborate case marking system like in some Caucasian languages or in Finnish with you know, 15 to 35 cases, I wanted to make do uh, with a more modest case inventory of just seven cases. Um, I've talked about non-intervergative and dative in my other LCC talk. Uh, I wanna say a little more about dative here and then tell you a little bit about locative, allative, ablative, and instrumental case and what they do because these are the ones, the ones I've highlighted that uh, whose functions overlap the most with what we use prepositions for in, in languages like English. So let's start with the dative case. So uh, for each of these cases, I, I tried to ascertain a kind of proto-role uh, or proto-function that each case would have and then see how far I could extend that proto-role to different cases in different environments. So for dative case, the kind of proto-role that's associated with dative is endpoint. So dative case marks endpoints. Well, what, what could be an endpoint? Uh, in an event. Well, an obvious kind of endpoint would be a goal in a motion event, right? So uh, the way to say I went to the river in Okuna, rather unsurprisingly, uh, is to have river be in the dative case. I went to the river. Uh, uh, a very common, uh, indeed almost universal extension of this uh, is uh, to mark recipients uh, in events of, of giving and telling and showing. 
Uh, so I do that in, in Okuna as well. So I showed the picture to the woman, or I showed the woman the picture. Matyatame uh, haikide. So woman is marked in the case. Uh, here now, here we're getting into sort of more abstract or metaphorical extensions of what it means to be an endpoint. Uh, so result states are marked with the dative case in Okuna. So in something like I ground the corn into flour. Um, the, uh, this is sort of, uh, uh, um, uh, I think John was talking about this yesterday, or somebody was talking about this yesterday, how common it is in languages for motion events uh, to, uh, the, our, our, the way in which we conceptualize motion events to get extended to events of change of state. So uh, if you think of grinding as being a kind of metaphorical emotion, uh, motion event uh, that I am subjecting the corn to, then the end point of that event is flower. So my little scene at some point with that, I ground the corn into flower. Um, and then what else can be an end point? Well, uh, maybe a point in time that marks the end of an event, right? So, Mokete would cite that heat, the guest stayed until winter. So here, the dative case is used where in English we would use a preposition like until. Uh, and then slightly more esoteric, uh, certain kinds of measure phrases also take the dative case in Okona. So think about an event like the guest stayed for three days. What's the for three days doing there? Well, it's sort of measuring out a period in time that extends from the beginning point of the event to the end point of the event, right? So the three-day mark sort of tells you when the event of the guest staying ends, right? So therefore, it's going to go in the dative case. So uh, the, the, the guest staying terminates once you get to three days, right? So uh, uh, where English has four, four three days, you can just use the dative in the book right? Um, locative case, unsurprisingly, marks locations, so st static locations. It could be a location in space. The guests are sleeping in the house. It could also be on the house or next to the house. I'll get to those distinctions later. Uh, 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 location and time. Um, uh, uh, or say a means of transportation, right? So uh, this is where Enim is located during the go there event, right? Enim uh, will now stay. Enim went there by boat. Um, possibly the most esoteric of these cases is the allative case, uh, which marks purposes and aims. What can be an aim? Well, one kind of thing in a motion event, the aim would be sort of the direction in which you're going, right? So, Enim is kunoa ikunyakai, Enim is traveling towards the river. So, uh, Okuna makes a distinction between going to the river, so the event ends when you get to the river, versus just going towards the river. So, the river might be uh, how you're orienting yourself uh, uh, in terms of moving towards it, but you might not intend to get there. Um, this gets uh, extended metaphorically to uh, beneficiaries. So, uh, uh, for as in I made the bread for the child, you'd use allative case uh, for, for that. Uh, 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 and also for uh, the subject matter with verbs of discussion and, and things like that. So, such as patea, reza means we talked about the weather. Um, allative case marks starting points or sources. So, melo uh, kaukete, I came here from the forest. Um, or uh, uh, so, if dative case is used for the end, res uh, the end state in a in a, uh, an event of creation or discussion, uh, ablative case can be used for the starting point. So I'm building a house out of wood. Um, causes uh, or reasons. Uh, I I stayed at home because of the rain. Uh, and then reference points. So uh, the kinds of things that we often use of or in English. So I live southeast of the river is Masipuno Kotsimota Sukpa. So Kotsimota is uh, in the direction where the sun rises. Uh, so that's basically southeast because they live in the northern hemisphere. Uh, and then Sipuno River tells you sort of the reference point. So it's I live southeast from the reference point of the river. Um, what else can be a reference point? Well, uh, in a comparative construction, uh, the um, uh, uh, the, the standard of comparison goes in the ab uh, ablative, so I am taller than Sakyal. It's sort of literally, I am taller from Sakyal, or I am taller from the reference point of Sakyal. Um, and then finally, instrumental case marks ways and means, right? So it could be uh, uh, a path that you traverse, so I wandered through the forest, uh, or I crossed the bridge. In English, we would say I crossed the bridge, or I crossed at the bridge, or via the bridge. Um, also instruments, unsurprisingly. So uh, I am cutting the meat with the knife. Um, 
quantitative, so I went for a walk with my spouse. Um, uh, manners, so I cut my hand by accident. Napat is accident, and Napat is by accident. Um, uh, and then also, a certain kinds of measure phrases go in the instrumental. So uh, uh, if you want to say, not just I am older than Sakyal, but I am two years older than Sakyal, uh, you would put two years, or small hand, in the instrumental case. So it's literally, I am older than Sakyal by two years, or with two years, <coughs> by means of two years. How do you express finer distinctions? So we've got those, those uh, uh, five cases, but that doesn't sort of cover all of the range of your typical uh, uh, set of prepositions. So uh, Okuna makes use of relational nouns, motion verbs, including trajectory and manner of motion verbs, and converb constructions. Converbs have kind of become one of the, uh, the unofficial sub-themes of LCC 7 it seems. Uh, I'll quickly go through the relational nouns. So uh, you might be familiar with these from some other languages. They're really quite common. Uh, so uh, Okuna has special nouns that refer to uh, sort of a location or an area. So Anko means the area around something or the surroundings. Uh, Uma means the area in front of something, uh, and so on. Uh, uh, as in many languages, a lot of these are derived from body part terms. So Uma is uh, the area in front of something, but it literally means face. Utsmu is the area behind something, but it literally means back or spine. And my favorite, Minat, is the area in the very middle of something, uh, and it means bone marrow. Uh, <laughs> so in English, we talk about the, he, he lives in the heart of the forest. Uh, in Okuna, he lives in the bone marrow of the forest. Um, so here's these uh, relational nouns in action. So to say the dog is sleeping not just at the house, but behind the house, uh, so here, putsmuna, in combination with kotu, house, kind of conveys behind, right? So it's literally, uh, and notice that putsmu, it's a noun and it's taking a case ending. So uh, the dog is sleeping behind the house is literally, the dog is sleeping at the house back, at the spine of the house. You know? uh, and these can combine with any case marker, right? So you can have a distinction between the dog is sleeping at the location behind the house, the dog went to the location behind the house, uh, the dog emerged from a location behind the house, or, this is my favorite one, uh, the dog ran behind the house and came out the other side. So this is the dog, uh, literally the dog ran via the house back, or the dog ran using the house back as part of the path of motion. Yeah. Uh, here are some slightly more abstract examples, so him, which means the interior of something can also be used metaphorically for times. So, chaloi pina is during the autumn, it's literally at the autumn interior. Um, and imo uh, usna, the way to say instead of me, uh, it's, it's really very similar to English. Instead of me, uh, uh, you use us, which means place, so uh, in place from me. Uh, let me talk a little bit about trajectory of motion verbs. So, these are verbs which encode a path, goal, or source of motion. So these are verbs that, uh, so uh, Okuna has a lot of these. There are verbs that mean things like go near, go along, go past, go up, go through, go into water, uh, and so on. Um, uh, but Okuna also has uh, a, a number of goal and source verbs. So uh, verbs that refer to uh, positions in the landscape. So ilata means to go to the shore or to come to the shore. Mokta means to go home. Pasta means, actually pasta literally means uh, to move from air or water to dry land. So uh, it could either mean coming ashore from water or landing, you know, like a, a, a bird landing. Usita means to come away from whatever river is nearest you when you're saying the word. Um, so uh, to express something like into, you would use, you know, a combination of the dative case and the trajectory verb like enter. So I went, I went into the house, it's literally I entered to the house. Uh, these can all be used transitively as well. Uh, as in many Urgent languages. So you can also enter books to the house. So I brought the book into the house. Um, there's a separate verb, etha, which means to insert. If you're staying outside the interior and moving something else to the interior. So I put the books in the basket. Uh, and these can sometimes be used metaphorically. So the way to say, to look into something, uh, is to insert your eyes into it. Right? So, uh, I looked in at the window, or I looked in through the window, uh, is literally, I inserted my eyes using, or I inserted my eyes via the window. Um, now, using these trajectory of motion verbs in combination uh, with uh, our sort of basic cases can get us a bunch of different <coughs> distinctions. So, I went by way of the house, it's just kind of neutral. Uh, uh, or I went past the house, you would just use a different verb for that, but the same instrumental case marking 
on the house uh, versus I went through the house, uh, I went over the house, uh, uh, I went along the side of the house. Yeah. Now, uh, all of these verbs sort of express something like go plus uh, a, a, a direction or a trajectory. How do you express other kinds of motion events like run into or walk into or jump into? Uh, distinctions like throw over versus throw out of versus throw through. Well, this is where the converbs come in, and I'll try and do this quickly. What is a converb? So it's a dependent or untensed verb form. Um, in Okuna, it's marked with the suffix e, and it proceeds and modifies the main verb to express the manner or means by which the event uh, denoted by the main verb is carried out. So with a stated verb like jote, uh, be quick, uh, the, the converb is gote in a quick manner or quickly, and you can use that to modify another verb. So, sakama gote sukai, but always working quickly. Uh, uh, so, that would make it look like an adverb form, but you can also do this with inventive verb like pull. So, kyokste means in a pulling manner, pullingly, by means of pulling. So, the way to say uh, uh, sakao uh, pulled the door closed is sakama hitole hoste muke. Sakao closed the door. By pulling, or so tell, close the door pullingly uh, in a pulling manner. So this is very similar to these romance constructions that we were talking about. The the syntax of them is quite different, but the logic is the same, right? Where the main verb expresses a path of motion, and then a modifier tells you the manner of motion. Um, here are some more examples of manner of motion verbs. So we have verbs that mean run, fly, walk, jump, scurry, scamper, or run on short legs. Uh, move in a serpentine fashion, uh, and so on. Uh, and here are just some examples of these verbs, uh, uh, in, uh, where they're, the sentence is just telling you something about manner of motion, but not really trajectory. But then you can bind these with the trajectory verbs to express things like I ran into the house. So here, it's the combination of the converb run and the main verb enter that's giving you run into, right? So I run entered the house, literally. So it's I entered the house by means of running, or I entered the house runningly, is how you do this. And I'll just end probably uh, with a few more examples of these converb constructions, because I think they're really cool, uh, and there's a long discussion of them in the grammar. So the child ran up the hill. Uh, you can sort of see how up uh, is getting distributed, or run up is getting distributed amongst many different parts of the sentence. So the trajectory up is encoded by the main verb, guess up, to go up. Um, and then the path, we know that the hill is the path of motion because it's marked with instrumental case, and instrumental is the path means manner case. Uh, so the child went up via the hill, uh, and then the manner is encoded by the convert. So as the child uh, went up by means of the hill runningly. Um, similarly, Sakal is walking home, as Sakal is going home walking late uh, by walking. Uh, the bats flew out of the cave. That bats exited the cave flyingly. Uh, the fox crept up on the hare. The fox approached towards the hare stealthily. Gladba uh, means to move in a stealthy manner. Um, I pelted the snake with stones, poor snake. Uh, so I hit to the snake by means of throwing stones. Uh, and then this is my favorite example that I made up. Onama kahoka ni so fuya means to either come out of water or to take something out of water if it's transitive. Um, Daniba means to um, grasp something in your jaws. Gani means the jaws of an animal. So ganipa is to, uh, to bite down on something. So ganipa fuya means to cause something to exit water by grasping it with your jaws. I don't quite know how we say this in English. The best I could come up with was the bear caught the fish in its jaws, which isn't quite right because it's not really catch. The bear grabbed the fish out of the water with its jaws. That's a little bit better. But it's really literally the bear took the fish out of water uh, by grabbing with its jaws. Uh, and then I have a little bit of time left, so I'll just end with some uh, miscellaneous ways in which Okuna gets by without having uh, at positions. Uh, so one is to use various kinds of circumlocution. So there's no word for without in Okuna. You have to express this in different ways. To say you can't cut meat without a knife, you have to say something like, uh, you can't cut, uh, it's literally, if one doesn't use a knife, one can't cut meat. Or unless one uses a knife, one can't cut meat. Uh, to say something like, life is in a lean bark, like a dog, 
Again, you use a, 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 a kind of complex construction. It's elim ma It's literally elim barked and a dog does does it in that way, something like that. Um, and then finally, uh, uh, there's lots of derivational morphology in Okuna that can allow us to express even more fine-grained distinctions. Um, so Basta is a, uh, a, a trajectory of motion verb that means to go against or to go in the opposite direction of something. And you can add a prefix to it, so, which means uh, something like uh, using words, you know, use your words, right? So the, the use your words words in Okuna all have this prefix so on it. So so kasa is literally to go in the opposite direction of something using your words. So that's how you say to speak against something, to argue against it, to contradict somebody. Um, saha means to go after or pursue something. Um, the prefix mi means by using your mind or mentally. So mi saha is to mentally go after something. So that's how you say to think, of, to think over something or to ruminate on something or to pursue an idea. Acha uh, uh, means to go towards or approach or transitive to bring or take towards. Uh, and na or now means using your hands. So naacha means either to go towards something using your hands or to take your hands towards something. So that's how you say to gesture towards or to point towards something. That's naacha. Um, and that's it. So tanu <laughs> I just want to say uh, uh, before I take questions, tanunta. So tan means kindness, and unta is another of these trajectory verbs. So unta means to go in a kind of circular path and then come back to where you started. Uh, so tanunta uh, literally uh, it comes from an expression that means something like may the may your kindness come back to you. So may the kindness that you have given me come back to you, and you answer that by saying. Um, which is rest assured it has already come back wow. meaning meaning your kindness in thanking me that has brought my kindness back to me so thank you um i'm wondering if you can do this with what you described so uh in in bringing together subject and object in, in the philosophical sense, um, I've, I've tried to come up with ways to express things like, uh, and in your example of children going up to hill, uh -huh. uh, children hill together, mm. you know, experience climbing. In other words, uh -huh. the hill experienced the, the children's climbing of it as well as the children experienced the climbing of the hill mm. all together as, as one idea. Uh -huh. Can, do, you, do you think? Well, you um, not that? using this machinery, but using slightly different machinery. So, Okuna, like many head final languages and languages with rich case marking, has a fairly free word order. So, whatever is going to be the topic of the sentence, that's the thing that will come at, at the beginning. So in my example, I had the children, I think, at the, yeah. at, at the beginning of the sentence. So that showed that the sentence was about the children. But you could put teneme, by means of the hill, at the front of the sentence. So it would be, by means of the hill, children walking go up, right? Uh, walking went up. And the, a, best, a, a way to translate that might be something like, the, the hill had children go up it. The, ch the hill had children walk up it. So there you're sort of presenting the event from the perspective of the hill, but we do it by, by shifting the word order around rather than using using this kind of machinery that I was talking about. Yes? I noticed that you didn't have a genitive case, so how can you express possession? Ah, very good question. Uh, by using all of the other cases. <laughs> so um, uh, this, this was another uh, uh, way in which I wanted to economize, no genitive case. Uh, and my rationale for that is that uh, well, I don't like genitive case for reasons that are unimportant uh, to anybody. But um, uh, uh, each of the cases sort of has a semantic core to it. 
And the thing about genitive cases, it's kind of a, a cover case for a bunch of different kinds of relations. So if you think about John's book, it could be the book that John possesses, or the book that he wrote, or the book that is otherwise associated with him. Maybe it's just sitting next to him. So you use different ones of the cases that I mentioned for, for different. So you use ablative case, for instance, for familial relations. So my mother is the mother from me. So the person who is mother from my perspective. Um, uh, for um, uh, sort of uh, uh, alienable possession like my book, uh, you could use the ablative case, so uh, uh, the book for me, or uh, you could use locative, uh, locative case, the book with me. So you use whichever of these uh, cases that I talked about um, uh, sort of best fits the semantic uh, uh, notion that the uh, uh, is being would be expressed by a genitive in some other language. Um, yes. Uh, I have a question. You mentioned um, you mentioned in your talk that you at the point you tried to put appositions into your language. Yes. And your language, you know, spit them out. Spit them out in a way. I guess I was wondering if you could talk more about that. Yeah. Oh well, what can I say about that? So, um, um. Well, I found that I wanted uh, a fairly rich case system, and um, the uh, you know it's it's of course not uncommon for a language to have both ad positions and a rich case system, like Latin or Russian, for instance, or even Finnish, with its fifteen cases, still has prepositions and postpositions as well. Um, so I, I sort of didn't really like the economy of that, and I uh, as I began to explore this idea of you know reduce, reuse, and recycle. Uh, and seeing ways in which I could um, uh, sort of reuse my different cases, like the instrumental and the allative, for um, semantic distinctions that it hadn't occurred to me before could be collapsed with a single form. The prepositions that were in the language began to seem more and more superfluous. Uh, I was using them less and less in texts. Uh, and I was also building up, just because I like them, building up the, the trajectory verb inventory in the language. And, and eventually, I think the language sort of hit a tipping point where it was the language was sort of telling me, you know, you don't really need these ad positions anymore. You can get by with the stuff that you've already got. So how they went. It's almost like from the whole, almost like your whole premise of trying to minimize things. Almost yeah. as you're working on it, you're like, oh, I see that this is a good way to minimize it. Yep. That's 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 how I was working. I'm being told I have to stop, but I will entertain more questions later. Thank you.